Hello. I hope you enjoyed your 14 days of review. And now today we'll start a new group of new awakening games. The first awakening game is one that came to me several years ago. And to some degree, I still play it today. Uh, the idea behind the game is that any opinion I hold, and an opinion in this case would be something that anyone else can disagree with. Any opinion I hold is merely conditioning. It is not who I am. It is not what I am. And in order to help me realize the true self, I want to see through, let go of opinions. Because when we're attached to opinions, we may not realize it, but we think we are those opinions. And in fact, you can tell that's true when someone disagrees with an opinion of yours and you get upset. It's, it's like you're defending who you are. So this is the game. Whenever you notice that you hold an opinion, question it. And I'll give you some examples of how you can question it or inquire into it in a moment. But first, let me give you some examples of how to notice when you hold an opinion. One way to notice that you hold an opinion is when you're watching the news or reading the news and you get upset because the government has made a decision or they are talking about making a decision that goes against what you think they should do. Or it could be they're simply not taking action. They're not doing what you think they should do. When you find yourself getting upset in this way while watching the news or reading the news, you've identified a place where you hold an opinion. Another way to find out that you have an opinion, because it's so funny, we'll have opinions, but we're so accustomed to our opinions and so attached to our opinions um, that we don't even notice their opinions sometimes. So another way to notice that you have an opinion is when you state something and someone disagrees with it. Or it could be someone else states something and you notice that you disagree with it. Whenever you notice you disagree with someone on something, look, because likely you have an opinion. Let me pull up um, NTI really quickly. I wish I'd thought of this in advance. I would have had it pulled up in advance. Just give me a moment. All right, I'm reading from NTI Luke chapter 6, verses 37 to 38. It says, everything that you see and experience, you see and experience through the filter of your mind. There can be no exception. This is always true. This is why you can see or experience something in one way and have one opinion or belief about it. And another one can seem to see or experience it in another way and have another opinion or belief. All of this seeing is occurring through the ego mind, which does not see at all. It interprets. Or we could say everything you see and experience, you see and experience through the filter of your conditioning. And it interprets what you see or experience based on that conditioning in the brain. 
The ego mind itself is a seeming split apart from the Christ mind, which is one. Since the ego mind is a split or fraction, its perspective or viewpoint is not whole. Since it is not whole, it is not knowledge, which is why it interprets. But the ego mind is not aware that it interprets. It believes. It knows. This is why ego minds seem to conflict. Each one merely interprets without knowledge, but mistakes its interpretation for knowledge. Knowledge cannot conflict for it is whole. Interpretation cannot conflict <laughs> since it's not knowledge. It can only seem to conflict, but that is a conflict that is a conflict of illusions or unreality, which is no conflict at all. Everything you see and experience, you see and experience through the filter of your own mind. In order to find peace, one must abandon interpretation and remember knowledge. This is the process of learning that I lead you through. You are learning that you do not know, you interpret. This enables you to step back from conflict and knowing that your interpretation is nothing, let your interpretation go. As interpretation is released, knowledge can be given. Listen to what knowledge is. Knowledge is peace. Since knowledge has no conflict, because it is whole and it is truth. Everything you see and experience, you see and experience through the filter of your own mind. This is good news for what you see and experience witnesses to the interpretation that you believe is knowledge. Upon seeing it and knowing that it is not knowledge because it is not peace. You can choose to step back and let your false interpretation go. You may see your brother's error, which is his false interpretation that he mistakes for knowledge. I tell you that as long as you believe your interpretation, you do not have knowledge. Therefore, you cannot lead your brother to let go of his interpretation. For only knowledge can see clearly to lead mistakes to healing. Whatever you see in your brother, bring back to your interpretation that you may give it up and be healed, which means whenever your opinion or point of view or beliefs conflict with someone else's opinion or point of view or beliefs, don't try to correct them. If there's a conflict here, you have just discovered that you have an opinion, which is not knowledge, it's interpretation based on conditioning, and you'll inquire into it so that you can see through it and let it go. And again, I'll teach you how to inquire in a moment, but let me just read a little more from NTI Luke chapter six. When you notice that you have an interpretation, take a break from what you see. Seek quiet time with me, inner wisdom, and share your interpretation with me, inner wisdom. Do not share your interpretation as if you must be right, expecting me to support you 
and lead you to the righteousness of your way. Share your interpretation, expecting that you are wrong because you have, have seen and believed without knowledge. In such humility, you can let go of your interpretation. You will see that it is nothing of value to you. And what you receive in its place, you will extend. This is knowledge or peace. What you receive in its place, you will extend. And that which you share shall be peace and restfulness. So we've talked just a little bit about how to recognize when you hold an opinion, get upset at something from the news, or you notice you and another conflict in your way of seeing something, right? All right. And we've seen a little bit of uh, what inner wisdom has to say about opinions. Now let me show you how to inquire into an opinion or at least give you examples. Your own way of inquiring into opinions may, may come up for you as well. But for example, there's this opinion that I have. This person has a different opinion. I can feel that I think I'm right. I can even feel some upset at people that think differently. Now I'm going to take some quiet time instead of arguing with this person. <laughs> I'm going to take some quiet time and I'm going to look. First, I look straight at the opinion. The opinion that I see is this. I state the opinion. And then I begin to inquire into it. Have I always held this point of view? Did I have this point of view when I was 10 years of age? Did I hold this point of view when I was two years of age? If not, then is this point of view what I am? Or is it something that has been added to what I am? something learned. If I had been raised by different people or in a different culture or in a completely different time, would I still hold this opinion? Is it possible that this opinion is limited by the limited experience of one person? Is it possible that this opinion comes from a partial biased point of view and not from the wholeness of love? Is it possible that this opinion is in some way mistaken or not complete? Do I know everything about what is in the best interest of the whole? Is it possible that holding to this opinion is a mistake? Is it possible that it's an ego defense mechanism that keeps me clinging to the personal self, clinging to the conditioning, clinging to the I that is right and the you that is wrong. Is it possible but the most loving thing that I could do is to realize I do not know and place everything in the hands of God. Is it possible 
that if I look at my true self, awareness being, that same awareness being that I've always been, that same awareness being that is timeless, that is always here, that is constant and unchanging. Is it possible that when I look there, I might discover it holds no opinion at all? Which am I? The conditioning that holds an opinion? Or the aware being that holds no opinion? What is my truth? Do I want to be that truth? If my truth holds no opinion, am I willing to let go of this opinion and abide as my truth? Where is the peace? Is there peace in holding the opinion? Especially when others conflict with that opinion? Or is there peace in no opinion and trusting the universe to truth? So those are examples of how to inquire into whatever opinions you find. So here's the game for this week. It's kind of like a hide and seek game, except the opinions are somewhat hiding, not fully. But you're going to find opinions. Look to notice when you hold an opinion. And then it's your next opportunity. Inquire into it. You can inquire into it as I just did, just sitting and looking, or you can pull out paper and pen and ask those questions and answer those questions in a journaling process, or maybe typing on the computer in a journaling process, whatever works for you. But this week we're seeking out our own opinions and inquiring into them. And the goal of course, is to discover the difference between what we are and what we aren't, what is merely conditioning, merely belief. All right, so have fun with this week of seeking out opinions and inquiring into them. And I will see you next week with a new awakening game. Bye.